All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome back. Again, thank y'all so much for coming over, man. Now, I, I've i done two Def Leppard reactions, all right? Um, hopefully, those videos are up. This is going to be my third reaction, but uh, I'm going to be reacting to uh, the story Um Def Lever drummer uses inspiring comeback to lift others. That's the title on the ABC News channel. Um, wanted to check this out. Um, but like I said, I'm the third video in. I don't know what's happening with the videos. The two I did before. Hopefully everything went smoothly with those. Again, appreciate you guys coming over, man. Because, uh, you know, y'all you, told me about what, what happened. Um... But I, I just want to hear him talk about it. So we're going to check this out. Hopefully everything goes smoothly with this. So we ain't going to waste no more time. Let's jump right into it. He's one of the best drummers in the world. But for Rick Allen of Def Leppard, getting there took some incredible resilience after he lost an arm in a horrific car accident. We visited Rick and his family to reflect on his recovery and Def Leppard's success and learn how he's using his journey to help others. ABC's Phil Lipoff has his story. Rick Allen. For more than 40 years, Rick Allen has been the drummer of one of the best-selling rock bands of all time, with mega hits like Pour Some Sugar On Me. Def Leppard has sold more than 100 million records worldwide. All the money and fame that comes with it, and still, those who know Rick best will tell you, that's not what's most impressive about him. And to really understand that, we need to go back to the 80s. Rick joined Def Leppard when he was just 15. By the time he was 21, the band was a huge success. Man. Rick was on top of the world. Hi, we're Def Leppard on MTV, music television. 24 hours 15. And then you buy a Corvette. Ah, yeah. December 31st, 1984, an afternoon drive in that Corvette would change the course of Rick's life. The crash happened fast. It was a violent rollover. A member of a British rock group is tonight fighting for his life in a Sheffield hospital. As the car rolled, the seatbelt came undone, and the seatbelt took my arm as I was flying out through the car. Oh. His right arm broken, his left arm gone. This picture taken of Rick the first day out of the hospital. It would be the first day of the rest of his life. Relearning how to do everything from water skiing and shooting pool to playing the drums with just one arm. The band stood by Rick and when he was strong enough, Def Leppard went on recording and touring, releasing Hysteria with a chart topping hit, Love Bites. The band's most successful album to date. Man. So this is where it all happens. Today, with the band on a pandemic pause, we visited Rick and his wife Lauren at their California home. In their recording studio, Rick shows us his drum kit and how the technology allowed him to sound like he did before the crash. The foot pedals sort of mimic what your left arm would do. Absolutely what it does. Wow. Instead of this being a snare drum, it would be, say, Tom Watt. Just so, let's see, I'm playing again. You know. So I can actually go here instead of having to reach all the way over here. Oh. Playing, Rick says, is almost a meditative experience. I bet, man. He's happy on the drums. And on this day, happy to jam with a journalist. I, I, I told you he's a real player. <laughs> okay, that was cool. Right next to Rick's recording studio is his art studio. Man, that's Going crazy, close, man. and it's like, what is that? Rick loved art as a child. He showed us this picture he made for his mom when he was five. Now he paints a lot. I started out with, you know, telephone boxes, and, you know, you see the buses here, and just all those iconic uh, things that everybody associates with. England or London. Yeah, yeah well, it's a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> Rick paints from the heart. His youngest daughter on a swing, a butterfly off in the distance. There are spiritual pieces too and other rock legends. Man. His most recent, a tribute to late Rolling Stones drummer Charlie Watts. 
one of Rick's signatures, poignantly his right hand. I nearly lost this one as well. So for me, it's just a reminder of everything that I went through and everything that I put this poor old hand through uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Rick's art sold at Wentworth Gallery, owned by Christian O'Mahony. The impact that it can have on people because of the similarity that he has with people that have suffered that type of trauma, uh, he really sees it as a blessing. Depending on the size of a piece, Christian says collectors are paying up to tens of thousands of dollars. Wow. Rick began donating part of the proceeds to the Wounded Warrior Project after a visit to Walter Reed Medical Center in 2006. I was so taken by the, 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 whole, the whole thing, the whole visit, and how much people looked up to me and what, what I'd done. But then I saw what these guys were going through. Just a very humble man, just, just wants to be a human amongst other humans and, and see how he can help others. Norby Lara fought for the country and felt immediately connected to Rick and Lauren. It was um, really cool to be around someone who had been through something you know, very similar to myself, losing an arm, and still being able to smile. Lauren is a singer, songwriter, and teacher. Rick says she's been helping him heal physically and emotionally since the day they met 20 years ago. Man. Today, they run the nonprofit Raven Drum Foundation. We collaborate with different nonprofits uh, to be able to facilitate healing through programs and fundraising and concerts. A focus on veterans with head trauma and PTSD. Mm. Both Rick still grapples with. When I met Rick, he didn't know he had PTSD. <laughs> and, and that was uh, something he was really struggling with. You know, it's something that we work on all the time to, to help build his resiliency. That resiliency built on Rick and Lauren's shared passions for music and social justice. And in 2019, Def Leppard was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm. He survived it and came out the other side stronger. A minute-long standing ovation by rock royalty. Lauren in the crowd, both overwhelmed by emotion. If you could go back into that hospital room and tell the 21-year-old version of yourself, one thing that would help him get through the rest of the hospital stay, what would it be? Yeah. <laughs> Your heart. One thing people tell me who know you that they admire about you most is your heart, your spirit. Thank you. I appreciate you allowing us in your house. Yeah. Sorry. Give me. All these years later, Rick is still healing, still drumming and touring, working through the pain and emotion of that crash and all that followed. If you were given the chance to go back and not have that happen, would you? That's a really good question. Um, in many ways, I think it enabled me to grow in yeah. so many ways. It became a blessing, a responsibility, a responsibility to, uh, you know, to, to other people, to myself. And uh, I, I think that has become a, a huge gift. Phil Lipoff, ABC News, California. What a journey and experience. Our thanks to Phil for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos. Hey, man. Shout out to the band for not even, you know, for not giving up on this brother as well. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm not sure how many people will be like, we need to find a new drummer. But, you know, I always talk about my childhood, how I grew up and how it made me the person that I am. Uh, sometimes, you know, you need to go through these life experiences and, and you know, you, you hate for it to be something so traumatic, but at the same time, if you can make it out, you know, and, and you have the platform that he has to be able to touch and relate to so many people and help them tell their story. Cause like I said, um, I mean, that takes a lot to not want to give up. Like think about like a drummer lost one of his arms and almost lost the other one, you know, and, and to be able to still be gone and pushing through, you talking about some 
perseverance, man. I mean, whew, I know that had to be tough. And then to find other things to do that you have passion for, you know, so cool, man. But like how that guy asked if you could go back, like it, it's one of them things like you hate to say everything happened for a reason, but you know, cause something like that, like, damn, I got to go through a car, you know, cause I'm pretty sure at the time people were probably saying, Hey, uh, you need to slow down. Like it, it happens a lot. Uh, um, is this one, if, if you guys are familiar with this one basketball player, Jason Williams, who's now an NBA analyst, um, he went to Duke, and I believe he was a first or the second draft pick in the NBA to the Chicago Bulls, and he went out and bought a motorcycle, and he crashed, and he was never the same, and he didn't even, like, I forgot, I don't think he came back after that. Just because I think he had like some type of nerve injury or whatever. He wasn't himself. So it's tough, man. It's tough dealing with like fame at such a young age. You know, you, you're just young, wild, and free. But uh, yeah, shout out to this brother. This was an amazing and inspiring story, man. Don't know if you guys seen this video. I know you guys know what happened. But um, it was just nice to hear him talk about it. But um there is some music that was in this video. I might have to trim it out. We're going to see. But hopefully everything goes smoothly, man. Peace out. Thanks for watching.